אני לא מבין, דווקא שקשה לי להאמין, דווקא שהכל נראה חשוב, דווקא שאני מרגיש הפוך, דווקא ש... לא מתחשב, דווקא שצריך להיאבק, דווקא שקשה לי לשמוע, דווקא אז אבוא שוב אליך
Hi friends, uh, I wonder if you could just feel what was going on in this. Is, this is a new song from the team. It was just freshly came out this week. We had maybe five or six of our key uh, Messianic leaders in the land that were just hit with different attacks this week. And this song was talking about that particularly Dafka in those times when we don't understand what's going on, that there's that moment of, of trusting you of trusting the Lord, and we just want to join our hearts with you, join your hearts with us. You know, every week before we start, we pray, we just think about all of you and pray for our hearts to be one together, as it says in Acts 1, that all the believers were together with one heart in prayer. Anyway, so we're here, and I just want to tell you about a little, we have a new music video coming out. We're very excited about it. And uh, it shares a little bit of something what we call the uh, a PPP, Praise, Prayer, and Prophecy. As we understand it, that at least I do, when the Lord gave us, as He gave all of us, this, uh, the commandment in Acts 1, to be His witnesses from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. And then He said He's going to come back. That's where we get our vision statement of uh, revival and restoration from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth and back again, what they did every day was they were meeting and in the presence of the Lord of Yeshua and praying, prophesying, and, and just uh, praising the Lord. And that's what we do every day. And you're going to experience that in this music video. Yes, so we are excited to announce that we've been working on a project of a new sound of original Hebrew worship songs from our team here that we're releasing to bless you. You can look for it on all the digital platforms. It will be coming out very soon. And we're excited to see this new expression connecting back to the ancient Israelite prophets, the language of the Bible in Hebrew, combined with a new flavor of the Hebrew worship that we love to worship the Lord in as a team here. Amen. And now we're going to give you a quick taste of it for a few seconds. You can go check that. was good I get I hope you can't wait to get this to come out uh, for you that was just a teaser so you can check it out we hope by next week it'll be out and I, I want to say that when we started our work here with Revive Israel and Tikkun Global this is what we did every single morning we just got together with our team we thought what was it like with that first group of disciples that they were praying and praising and prophesying together in the holy spirit and so that's what we did it's an interactive time and so we wanted you to be able to enjoy it and, and get involved in it so that's what we're doing right now and we want to invite you to taste it a uh, little more interactively with with the uh you'll see that in the with this new music video coming out and with our whole team but remember this is what we're doing with the presence of the Lord that we can extend Yeshua's kingdom to the ends of the earth and then shoot back here to Jerusalem. I just one more thought that as we were praying right before the, the, the broadcast here, I was just seeing that all of our hearts together, we're becoming a landing strip, a landing strip for Yeshua to return, a landing strip for his kingdom to come, his kingdom come, his will be done on earth that is, is it, as it is in heaven. And we say, Come, Lord Yeshua, Baruch Haba B'Shem Adonai. Let's come join us today.
Thanks, friends. I was just um, praying as you were leading us in worship and wondering what this must look like from the heaven. Is God looking down upon us and seeing this worship coming out it, from the Jerusalem area and it's going out to East Asia and to Western coast of, uh, of America and South America? Wow, that, that what a beautiful gift that is to the Lord. And I hope we can just keep building this every week so we can be worshiping, worshiping together, all of us around the world, from a, a Hebraic root center here in Jerusalem. And um, I was thinking about this, this is who we are, and it's just what part of what um, Ariel has been teaching about this whole for a, a few weeks from the book of Ephesians. You know, Yeshua told us that not only we are to believe in Him, but He said, on this rock, our faith in Him, He is building his ecclesia, his iglesia in, uh, in Spanish, iglesia in, in, in Portuguese. But this is, what is this? It's a group of people. That's all it is. It's you. It's me. It's all of us around the world. I actually liken it to what God said about the people of Israel after they came out of, out of Egypt. He said, you are amskula, a special treasured purple colored people robed in the Lord. It's, it's very sweet. But that's who we want to be together. And I want to say that we believe in this. We believe. I want to read you one quick half of a verse before Ariel shares. And it's um, in Ephesians 1 verse 15. He says, um, Shemati al emunatchem ba'adon Yeshua. I've heard about your faith in the Lord Yeshua. Ve'al avatchem l'chol ha'kdushim. And about your love for all the holy ones, all the saints. That's what we're talking about. There's a group of people in the whole world, every different nation, tribe, and tongue, and God sees them, and He calls us saints. I guess that's His faith, you know. But we're in the process. But this group of people, whether you call it a family, a church, an ecclesia, uh, uh, the extended commonwealth of Israel, the chosen people, it's all this group of people, and God is creating us together in something very special. I'm excited to hear what Ariel has to say about this. And, you know, he's been teaching on the book of Ephesians. I can't think of anyone better 
to hear this depth of God's purposes for his people here on earth in the book of Ephesians. So, Father, we pray to bless Ayo right now in his heart and lips, Lord, and bless us in our heart and our ears to be able to hear what you have to say to us. Amen. Amen. Well, shalom and hello to all of you. It's good to be back uh, here worshiping together and studying God's Word together. As Asher shared, I've been doing this series in the book of Ephesians. I think it's going now in four months or so every other week, every two or th sometimes three weeks. Uh, we've, uh, we're at the end of chapter three. Uh, we've been talking a lot about the one new man. Uh, and that whole paradigm and teaching uh, from the Apostle Paul at the second half of chapter 2 and, and uh, beginning of chapter 3. We talked last time about all the principalities and powers and the nature of the spiritual warfare that's involved in this. Uh, today, as I said, we're uh, at the second half or towards the end of chapter 3, verses 14 through 21, which is another long prayer of the Apostle in this epistle. And uh, if you remember, back in chapter 1, also verses 15 through 23, chapter 1 is a long prayer. Asher just quoted from the beginning of that prayer. Uh, and that's a, so we're going to talk about this second uh, prayer of the Apostle Paul. And they're long, and they're big, and they're dense, just like this letter is dense with f uh, truth after truth and revelation after revelation. It kind of just keeps coming. Remember, this letter doesn't contain any specific references to things happening and greetings to this and, oh, you know, this sort of, it's all just teaching, 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 teaching. Um, so that's the first thing I want us to think about today. I did a little uh, calculation. In these first three chapters, okay, there's these two long prayers. Uh, they are seven verses in chapter one, eight verses in chapter three. That's 15 verses together. Total of the three chapters, there's 23 verses in chapter one, 22 in the second, 21 in the third. That's 66 total verses. That means 15 of 66 verses in the first three chapters. That's 22 point something percent. I can't remember what the calculator said exactly. Uh, of, of this letter is prayer. Think about that. Why is it that the Apostle Paul, when he's teaching by the Holy Spirit all these amazing truths, has to spend a lot of time and ink on those parchments speaking out prayers and declaring prayer? You know, I think there's, it's an, important, there's an important message here before we actually get into the prayer about how important these two things go together, prayer and truth. Worship, praise, and truth. Why is it that God's people, even when we're doing a production like this on the internet, before we get to the teaching, we had half an hour of prayer and praise and worship? Well, is that just to kind of get you warmed up and feeling good so that you can get the word from the teacher? Well, sort of. But that's what Paul's doing. He's saying there's, there are truths, there are revelations, there are things I, I, he's going to explain that you can sort of listen to and go, okay, okay. But he, as we'll see, what he prays for is that we get a, some kind of revelation, understanding that begins to transform us from the inside. And that has a lot to do with prayer. I put these things together like this. Prayer and truth, or prayer plus truth equals transformation. All right? Let's look at one of the things common, and it's kind of also a little review of, of the prayer in chapter 1. They're both in verse 18. Okay, if you look at that, Paul prays in, 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 in the prayer in, in chapter 1 uh, that the Father of glory may give to you a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. That's verse 17. Eight, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. All of this for what purpose? So that you may know what is the hope of His calling. In other words, he's saying, look, I I'm explaining to you the hope of his calling. What is the calling? What is the glories? What is the, all the truth of the gospel? Who we are in him, who we are in one, one, together in the ecclesia. But you need to know it. you got to get it. And that's his prayer. In chapter 3, right? The prayer in chapter 3, in verse... Oh, again, I don't want to read the whole thing. Um, well, you know what? I am going to read the whole thing. It deserves to be read. Let's re read from verse 14. Chapter 3, verse 14. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, 
from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man, so that the Messiah may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, all of this stuff he's praying for us is for what purpose? That you may be able to comprehend with all the saints together with what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of the Messiah, which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Messiah Yeshua to all generations forever and ever. So again, you see in both prayers, he's praying that we will comprehend, that we will know a spirit of wisdom and revelation, things that we've heard before, things which we've read in this letter before. But there's a knowing, there's a knowing that we have to keep on knowing and, and soaking our minds, that our minds and our hearts have been so perverted and, and, and stained by sin in this world for so many gener generations since Adam and Eve. We have to constantly soak, soak our minds and our hearts in these truths so that we can comprehend the breadth the length, the height, and the depth. And Paul basically is saying, if you get that, I, I, that's it. The rest is commentary. All this truth, everything I'm explaining to you, it will be self-evident. You won't have to struggle that much if you can comprehend and get these things. And he's doing that by prayer, which is a message for us that with, if we want to get truth, if we want to get it deep into our hearts, we have to learn to pray, to worship, to invite the Holy Spirit to give us that uh, spirit of wisdom and revelation. All right, let's dive into this prayer in chapter 3. And I want you to, just, to notice right from the outset, Paul says something about God uh, that he doesn't say anywhere else, and he doesn't pray in any of his other letters. And there's many, many prayers in his letters. He says, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. The Greek, in some trans, it can, it can be translated whom every family or from the whole family in heaven and earth derives its name. He's, ta he, he's, 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 he's describing the Father in a way that is, for me and for us, should, a confirmation of everything that he's been teaching since chapter 2, verse 11. I just want to remind you, he said that from chapter 2, verse 11, the, the apostle switches gears from universal truth for, that's, that's, that's needed and correct for every indiv indiv individual believer. And he starts talking to groups, to the Gentiles and to the Jews. Okay? And he starts talking to uh, the other part of our identity as human beings, which is part of a family, part of a tribe, part of a nation, part of a language group. Right? I often say when I teach on the one new man, that the one new man is a paradigm or a parable or a metaphor of the church, just like there are many in the Bible, right? We are a family. He's our father. And uh, so we are brothers and sisters. We are a body, this organism together. It's a kingdom. Uh, we are a holy temple, all these things. And the one new man is an understanding of the ecclesia as an ecclesia made up of families of peoples, of tribes, tongues, and nations, of Jews and Gentiles. And so it's speaking to us at that, at that place in our identity, and that's confirmed by how he prays at the end of this teaching. He's, he invokes the name of the Father as someone who is, who everyone, every family on the earth, every nation, whether it's us here in Israel, in, 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 in the Jewish people, that's an easy one because we have we have the word of God. He chose us. Jacob is his firstborn. But it means for every tribe, tongue, and nation, your identity, your name, somehow comes from the one Father in heaven. Again, not you as an individual, but your family, your tribe, your nation, your people. Okay? Um, also notice in verse 18 which is a little bit different than what we saw in chapter 1. He says that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints, all the saints, together, together, Jew and Gentile. You remember what we learned in the last few weeks, Ephesians 3, 6, 
this synchronization, sin klerenoma, sisoma, sin metoka, right? Co-heirs, co-body, this togetherness. There's a revelation, by the way, that you can only get when you're in right relationship in the body of Messiah. Let me say that again, and it's something that's very, very uh, urgent and current and important for our day. Because in our day, there's a lot of things going on, whether it's the, this, uh, the pandemic and the vaccines and this conspiracy about this and big tech and the governments. Or I, it, I just read them some things today on a, a leadership group uh, on WhatsApp here in Israel that surprised me of, of a leader just pulling out all the conspiracy theories and putting them together in an amazing way. A leader who is um, a single guy who I would, you know, I, I love him, da, 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 but not necessarily connected to a network, not necessarily accountable to other leaders. Okay, that's important. And it's going to be very, very important in the end times and when you look to advice and spiritual insight from leadership. Are those leaders people who are mutually submitted to other leaders? Are, they, are there checks and balances? Or did the guy just, or the guy or the woman, or just a prophet who just gets his things from God and starts, that's it. And there's no balances. We saw this a lot. We did our series. You can find it on, on YouTube when uh, Asher, myself, Dan Juster, Ron Cantor, we did, uh, what did we call it? Prophecy and politics. That's one of the things we, we, we talked about, is that for there, there has to be accountability among apostles and prophets in all the ministry, that there's checks and balances because none of us, all of us see through a glass darkly and none of us have the whole picture. So that's what Paul says, that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, length, height, height, and depth. Okay? Let's move on to the, uh, the well, it's really the last part of Paul's, of, of this prayer in verse 20. Um, one which I love and I've prayed I, early on, I think my first year as a believer, I memorized this prayer because I, people said, and I was discipled well, they said, if you don't know how to pray or you want to learn how to pray, memorize the prayers of the Bible. Uh, and we, I did like a class where we memorized a bunch of these prayers of the Apostle Paul. And it really transformed my life and my prayer life. And I always love this verse 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundant or exceeding abundantly in this translation, Beyond all that we ask or think, wow, according to the power that works within us, within us. You know, this time as I was preparing for this message and this teaching, I read that again, and I had a funny thought. Maybe it's occurred to some of you, maybe not. Uh, the thought was this, if God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than I can even ask or think, then why should I trouble myself with thinking and asking? Because as soon as I thought and asked, God's, it's not, it's not enough. It's not high enough. God's got more. He's doing something bigger. Oh, what is he doing the bigger thing? Oh, now I can think that. I can ask that. Well, he's going to do something bigger. Wow. Wow. It's, God is God. He's going to do things that, that I can't even comprehend. I can't even think he's doing things right now. He is the super multitasker of the universe. He's got his fingers in everything. He's, in, he's hearing the prayers of millions of people all at the same time and responding to them in some way. And um, I began to think about this whole doctrine, if you want to call it, that, of, the, of the sovereignty of God uh, and how important it is, but also how dangerous it is for us as believers. Are you with me? This is really a, another statement, as there are many, many statements in the Bible from the beginning, in the beginning, God, right? He's God. He's the creator. We're the created. He's the potter. We're the clay. He's the alpha. He's the omega. He's the one who said, said, said through Moses to, to Pharaoh that I will have mercy on whom I, have, I will have mercy, compassion on whom I will have compassion. He is sovereign. It's really the first truth of biblical faith. And it's a, it's a solid rock that we have to build our faith on. It's very important. Okay? But if you just take that sort of sovereign of God, and God is God, and there's, He's incomprehensible, He'll do whatever He wants to do, um, it can, you can 
apply that truth in the wrong way. You know what I'm talking about. You can apply that truth in an unbalanced way. Um, when I think about this, uh, this, this doctrine, this idea, uh, I like to go to one of Yeshua's parables that we have in Matthew 25 and Luke 19. Okay? In Matthew, it's uh, verses 14 through 30. In Luke 19, it's verses 12 through 27. You remember the parable. The version in Matthew, okay, is a parable of a master who is going away, right? By the way, this is, the timing of this is as Yeshua is entering Jerusalem, or about to enter, and there's great expectation, Baruch haba, b'shem Adonai, Hoshiana. Everyone is thinking that Yeshua is coming into Jerusalem as the king, and he's going to establish the kingdom. He's going to do something miraculous to to get rid of the Romans and, and, and their authority. Even years later, in Acts, uh, not years later, 40 days, 40, 50 days later, uh, in Acts chapter 1, after he's been resurrected, and after he's been teaching the disciples about the kingdom, they're thinking the same thing. Lord, are you, Acts 1, 6, are you now at this time going to restore the kingdom? And Yeshua told these parables to basically warn people, teach people, well, there's a secret here. The secret is, the master, the king, is going away for a while. And he's going to give to, to his servants, to his Talmudim, to his disciples. He's going to give them gifts. He calls them talents here, a certain kind of money. Okay? And he's going to watch what they're going to do with it. Well, we've been working on it for 2,000 years. Um, and you know the story in Matthew. He gives, uh, there's three servants. He gives five talents to one of them, two talents to another, and one talent to the third. In the version in Luke, he, there are ten servants, and he gives them all the same, one talent. And then he goes away, and then he comes back to see what his servants have done with their gifts, with the truth, with the gospel, with faith, all those things, okay? You know, in Matthew, the first servant who got five says, Lord, I worked hard, I traded. I have five more. That's 100% yield. Pretty good. Pretty good investment uh, return uh, on your investment. Um, the next servant comes and he says, I, I took your two talents and I made two more. In Luke, there is a servant who took one and made ten. A, t a thousand percent, I think. Is that right? Ten he tenfold, okay, return on his investment. Amazing. But then there's the third uh, um, uh, slave or servant who comes to his master and says this is verse 24 Matthew 25 24 and the one also who had received the one talent came up and said master I knew you to be a hard man reaping where you do not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed in other words, I know you to be sovereign. You do things that are exceedingly abundantly, way beyond what, I'm, what my logic is able to grasp. Okay? You're God. You're the master. And I was afraid and went away and hid your talent in the ground. See? You have what is yours. I saved it for you. Here it is. But his master answered and said to him, You wicked, lazy slave. You knew that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I scattered no seed. You ought to have put my money, at least, I'm adding, at least in the bank. And on my arrival, I would have received my money with a little bit of interest. You could have done something. Okay? In Luke's version, he says, I'm I'll, I'm going to, you're going to, I'm going to make you eat your words. I'm judging you according to your words. He doesn't correct his theology. He basically says, your understanding of who I am is correct. I'm not going to change that. You're right. I can reap where I did not sow. Exactly. But you missed something. You missed something. Instead of making you afraid, Instead of making you a wicked and lazy servant, 
you should have watched what the other guys were doing. That's what makes me happy. What makes me happy is people understanding, receiving the truth of God, of God's sovereignty, and going, wow, he's chosen me. And this is all of what Paul is teaching in Ephesians. He's chosen me. He's given me talents. This is a, a partnership I have. Of course he's sovereign, but he's given me a job to do. And I want reward. I want to pray. I want to fast. I want to share the gospel. I want to believe. I want to take those talents, everything he's given me, and make more and make as much as I can. Verse 28. Therefore, take away the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has shall more be given, and he shall have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. This slave was right. This is a hard man. He's a hard man. And cast out this worthless slave into the outer darkness. In that place there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I don't know if you've ever gnashed your teeth. My father of blessed memory, who came to the Lord just two days before he, before he died, uh, he used to gnash or grind his teeth in the middle of the night while he slept. And it did terrible things to his teeth and his jaws. And he had to sleep with a, a plastic mouth guard, okay? But that's why you're sleeping. But if you're awake and you're gnashing your teeth, that means you're in tremendous pain and suffering and frustration. It's a picture of hell. It's a picture of judgment, of weep, this place of weeping and gnashing of teeth in the outer darkness. So you're with me. We're talking about the sovereignty of God. We're talking about the misunderstanding or the misapplication of the sovereignty of God. Let's go back to Ephesians, that, this prayer. Okay, again, I don't know if that thought ever occurred to you. It occurred to me this morning. This, yeah, I, I can't comprehend everything that God is doing. And he's able to do, he's, when I look around the world today, what's happening with, with this, I mean, here in Israel, it's, it's depressing. It's depressing. We thought we were celebrating a month ago. Wow, we're Israel. We did it. 60% got vaccinated. 20% are, are getting over it. They got the antibodies, this and that. We're free. We're open society now. Everything's wonderful. And guess what? <laughs> the Delta. The Delta is doing us in. We have, as Asher mentioned, we have brothers, dear brothers in our congregation. Brother Leon Mazin, a pastor of one of our Tikkun Israel, he's in the hospital right now suffering terribly from COVID-19. Uh, we're, we're, we're at home with our kids during the summer break, which is not easy. And all of the camps and all the activities were canceled. So we've got to figure out, my wife and I constantly juggling things just to find an hour or two to do some work and prepare a message like this, okay? And we're thinking, oh no, now we're looking towards September and the feasts, by the way, in Israel over the last year and a half, all of our, no, the two of the three major uh, Seger, what do they call Seger quarantines that we had were around the holidays because that's when everybody gets together and travels all over the country. It's a, it's a disaster if you're trying to uh, keep, keep a pandemic from spreading. Okay, well, guess what? The fall feasts are coming up in September. Kids are supposed to go back to school. They're saying the Delta variant is catching wildly through children. Oh, no, they're not vaccinated. Oh, no, my kids are going to, we're going to be home for the next six months. Ah! It's, 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 um, there's a lot of things going on in the world today that are just challenging. But God calls us from this prayer, and this is, I'm going to close with this. I'll let the worship team know in just a few minutes, and then I'm going to pray. Because <laughs> if, if there's nothing else in this message but the need to pray, then it's, it's that. To him who is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, comma, according to the power that works within us. Notice the connection. It's not just God doing whatever he's going to do. That's true. The third servant, he knew that. But there's a power that works within us to intercede, to cry out, to pray, to join together, to come together in unity. Oh. And, and, to, and to take whatever, he's invested something very, very precious in us. Not just as individuals, but to all the saints together. And in that togetherness, there's wisdom, there's revelation, there's understanding. There's going to be understanding about the end times. Are we in the end of the end of the end and it's time to get out and disconnect yourself and run away? Or no, are we supposed to stay on the ship 
and be here to pray and to preach. We're not quite there yet. This is a birth pang. How close is the birth? How close is it? I think that is there's going to be understanding and safety in the body when leaders and people are together praying at a high level. We're seeing that. We're part of a little part of helping to facilitate that. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, to the Father from whom every family, from whom all of us, from whom everyone out there, my friends in Canada, my friends in Hawaii, my friends in Japan, in China, and other places, your family, your nation, your tribe gets its name, its identity from the same Father, the Father God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Lord, we ask that you, according to the riches of your glory, would strengthen us with power through your Spirit in the inner man, so that the Messiah may dwell in our hearts through faith, and that we, being rooted and grounded in his love, in the security of his love, that we may be able to comprehend just a little bit more today and a little bit more tomorrow with all the saints together what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know this love of Christ, this love of Messiah. Lord, we, there's a secret here that you're doing exceedingly abundantly more than we think to ask, but we have to think and we have to ask. There's a power working in us in partnership with you. Lord, help us to be ecclesia. I pray it for ourselves here at RITG and our congregations, everyone, a people who are praying and activating that power within us to release you to do according to your will way beyond what we're able to think and to ask. B'Shem Yeshua. Amen.
Hi friends, I hope you uh, enjoy together with us this time of teaching and of worship. I want to just uh, end up uh, right on the prayer that Ariel talked about in uh, Ephesians chapter 3. Such a beautiful verse, verse 16. Shall we me iten lachem koach fi osher kvodo nitchazek al yedei rucho badam apnimi And as I pray that that uh, God would give you strength according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened by His Spirit in the inner man. And I just want to pray that right now. Well, I'm going to pray it for me too. I'm going to pray for all of us. Everybody's dealing with things wherever you are. And so let's just pray for one another. Think about it right now. If we all just prayed for one another to be strengthened with power and might in the inner man. Let's just say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Yeshua, we pray for every single one of us and our families and our children, and our team members, our congregational members, our, for this global family. Father, we pray for every person to be strengthened with power and might, encouragement in the inner man, greater strength on the inside than the attacks on the outside. Father, once again, Lord, in the midst of difficulties, you are very present, very present. And Father, we thank you right now for every one of us, strengthened with power and might in the inner man, coming out from the inside in faith, but strengthened by the love of God to know how much God loves us in Yeshua, the Messiah. That inner strength greater than any external problem bless you with that in Yeshua's name. Amen.